How's everyone doing? Sorry about that. We uh, we had a little bit of a... Just seems like every week I have a new issue, right? So, um, welcome one and all to the damn stream. Uh, some of you know me, but for those of you that don't, my name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Every week on uh, our channel here, which is the official Dungeon Alchemist channel, we host a stream which we call the Damn Stream. It's named as such because when you bake and save a map in Dungeon Alchemist, the map extension is .dam or Dungeon Alchemist map. We lean into that a little bit, uh, you know, calling it the Damn Stream, etc. So today's stream, we're starting off by showcasing the winner of a bi-weekly contest we call the Damn Challenge. Uh, and uh, the winner is uh, the map you see in front of you here, which is absolutely interesting and crazy. And it's a fun new take on map building. <laughs> and the creator, if I'm going to try and say their name correctly here, I'm, I just want to make sure I don't butcher it. It is Zretsim. Uh, X-R-E-T-S-I-M. Zretsim. Oh, we got some raiders popping in. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Thank you so much for the raid. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Retsim. <laughs> Swedish cook, you're hilarious. I'm doing good, counselor. How about you? KO'd and yourself, I'm doing wonderful. So a uh, welcome one and all. I know we've got a bunch of people that have popped in and said hello and I haven't said hi to everyone. So if I haven't said hi to you, welcome. We had a little bit of technical difficulties in the beginning of the stream, got it all sorted. Now we got this raid. Just wanna say welcome one and all and thank you again for the raid. So um, Retsum, as, as you could see, has made a very interesting take on a map and Basically, what you see in the center is the main floor of the building, but on the sides, it's got these little, you know, cutaways showing you different portions of the different floors of the map. So I would assume this would be like the base floor because it's the lowest, right? And then you come over here, you have another one that's a little bit higher, that's like a middle floor, and you can see the stairs coming up to it and going up above. And then this would be kind of your top, or like, well, last inner floor leading up to this upper deck here. So it's essentially a pull apart or a cutaway with all of these floors in one build, which is a very interesting take. Um, I honestly love this idea and it's very clever. Yeah, there was, a, so first off, I wanna say there was a lot of really good builds this week, but one that stood out was this one because of this reason. It was so clever and unique. You know, there was some crazy cabbage builds. Don't get me wrong. And almost all of them were just top notch and like amazing builds. It was really hard for me to decide. But this right here was so unique and interesting. I, I couldn't, couldn't not pick it. Yeah, and it's a great way to simulate, you know, multiple floors for your, your players on one map. So, and I think the only thing I would do to change this is maybe with these like custom assets is put a floor level. So one, two, three, so that, you know, anyone else downloading it would know right off the bat. So yeah, honestly, I want to apologize for being so against cabbage as a, as a theme. I thought it was just gonna fizzle out and there would be no entries that like, but honestly y'all brought your A game and really, Really, uh, it, it was interesting to see some of the maps that we got out of this. I, I'll think about it, Seisu. It was a great theme, but going into it, I was like a little worried that we wouldn't get that many entries. Next theme, lettuce. That's essentially the same thing. <laughs> uh, you, you are, you are just hilarious, Well. Man, I wish we could do a poll, but we don't have our uh, affiliate stuff all finalized. I'm working with the devs to get that all figured out. So 
we're essentially going to turn this channel into a charity. Um, and uh, how that'll work is we're going to apply for affiliate. And then if we get approved, any monetization on this channel will go to a charity. Essentially, every quarter will like or half year will pick a charity and that money will be, you know, put together into a big bundle and given to them. Um, there's also a charity like a plug in or something for Twitch now, too. So we could do it that way. So but any bits, any ads, any subs, any gifted subs and then the direct donations to that charity as well. And we've been kind of working out all the various details and picking a charity that we want to work with. But we I think the theme we're going to go with in the beginning is someone that um, does like a lot of forest protection and forest replanting. Um I mean, a lot of people in our community print maps, which equals a lot of paper and a lot of ink. So I think it's kind of responsible of us to have a an impact on the, you know, on the way forests are, you know, uh, catered to and helped grown around the world. Because we do impact that negatively, we should impact it positively as well. Hey, welcome back, Dubois. How you doing? Um... And that's something I've been kind of putting together and working with in the background. And it's it's going to be coming to fruition soon. I'm very good. Very good. Glad you're back, Dubois. So, um, honestly, like, I'm very excited to see how this comes to fruition. But um, basically, any way that this channel can monetize itself will we'll turn it into charity for the community. <clears throat> Um, one moment. I, I have something else I want to share with you guys, but I just want to make sure it's all good to go. Okay, so uh, I know y'all have been wanting this for a minute, so I just want to make sure it's ready. I should have set it up as a command, but I was, I kind of, it slipped my mind until now. Okay, so um, a lot of you have been wanting merch for a while, right? Um, <laughs> it's been asked about a lot. And uh, I would like to share that we do have some merch available at this time. We have a merch store that's set up for like North America, South America area, and then we have one that's set up for uh, Europe area. Uh, I don't have a command set up. Give me one second, okay? You jerk. <laughs> I just told you that. <laughs> here is the US one, and uh, here is the UK one. They're essentially close to the same store in design. Some of the merch options are slightly different because of availability through the distributors. Anyway, I'm going to add commands for these soon, but um, basically you want to shop at the Co UK one if you're like Europe and that area um, because your shipping will be better and the timing that it takes to get to you will be better. Uh, the US one is, you know, if you're closer to that one. Um, but we've tested them and the merch gets to you pretty quick and the merch quality is also pretty good. Um, but yeah, feel free to check those out. No requirement. Yet again, that's kind of just a fun thing we wanted to offer the community because people have been asking for it. So you can see here, there's just a few merch items you can look at and check out. S stickers, mugs, hats. We weren't really happy with the quality of the shirts and other stuff, so we removed them from the store for right now until we can find a better, uh, a better company to work with. 
Yeah, unfortunately, when we got them shipped, they just were super very faint and pale. And they, like, washed away in, in the first wash on some of them. Like, this one here I ordered custom from another shop because the ones we from our shop weren't that great. Everything else we've tested is coming through good. And we think it might have just been a bad batch. And we're trying to talk to them and make it work. Hey, see you, Nikki. You have a great one. Um, but uh, ultimately, that is something that's, uh, you know, will be available. Hey, yeah, go eat. Take a break. Get some hydration. Hope you uh, have a wonderful day. Okay, so Retsum, thank you so much for making this beautiful map. And I really love the cutaway, the slices. It's a great, great fresh new take. Oh yeah, you can make animated maps in Dungeon Alchemist quite easy. I mean, very easily. It is, a, I mean, a great... Uh, what was the inspiration? Oh, crud, I hit exit. Best community manager in the world. One second. Reload that. What was your inspiration behind that map, though? I'm going to um, load up something really quickly to give you an example, though, Dubois. So... Huh. Okay, there was one that's like uh, specifically for animated exports. Okay, so this map here is kind of like a perfect, it's just about 1920 by 1080. And as you can see here, there's a lot of movement in this map and the, you know, the various water wheels and, um, you know, windmills and, you know, grindstones, etc. Even the water has a little bit of movement to it. Um, so with that in mind, if you go to, hey, Game Master Eric, how you doing? So if you go to file and go to export um Dubois are you ex are you just popping it through like with a laptop just playing a file like an image or a video or would you be running it through a virtual tabletop software to the tape to the tv so let's just assume you're just playing the video and not using virtual tabletop software so first things first you'd probably want to turn on the grid so the players can see the grid um in the top down on the tv and then you would go to video export if you want a live animated export. And then there's a whole bunch of options here. So you got video fast for smaller maps, low quality, WebM very slow for larger maps. You really only want to use WebM if you have a very big map and a very powerful computer. Um, so I usually stick to MP4 and smaller maps because they're, they're better suited for most computers and that average size map. Now, if you have a very big map that has a lot of animation, you want to export it. You want to stick with WebM uh, because after a certain point, you can't get above a certain scaling and quality with MP4 because the exporter won't allow it. But WebM will scale and goes up higher and higher. Does that make sense? Um, so basically, you could just do a standard video export. And I've tested this with a few different uh, like... In a few different contexts, this is an MP4 file, so it does import to things like, say, Owlbear. If you use Owlbear Rodeo, their 2.0 version supports animated maps, and it works perfectly with this. Or you could export it for, say, Roll20. If the file is small enough, it will import to Roll20 if you have a pro account. Um, alternatively, you could use this file on almost any... BTT system that supports animated maps with MP4. So say you, um, you're you using, say, like Dynamic Dungeons to support your tabletop system. Dynamic Dungeons works with MP4, so you could import this to Dynamic Dungeons and set it up as a scene and, you know, move it through that. So there's a lot of ways Dubois it could work for you. Alternatively, you could just use the MP4, you know, in a flash drive or a computer and have it playing and you just go to a different video each time. 
Oh, Eric, I'm glad to hear it. I, I would love to hear any of your feedback on that. Actually, all of you, if you've used animated maps, how do you like them? So Dynamic Dungeons is a piece of software. Well, they're first off, they're a Patreon. They make these amazing animated maps and beautiful maps that are like 3D, right? And then they made this software that pairs with their maps that allows you to, if you use like a projector or a TV tabletop, um, or maybe you are just using like Discord and you want to have the maps kind of staged so they kind of play one after another with easy settings and clicking, you use Dynamic Dungeons for that. So Dynamic Dungeons would work in tandem with Dungeon Alchemist. You would make the maps, export them, and then use Dungeon Al or Dun Dynamic Dungeons to set up like it's like a production software where you put in like, oh, this is scene one, scene two, and it's set up to go from one to two to three and you have there's like overlays and different assets for it it's very cool if you want to add some like a little bit of oomph to your maps with a tv tabletop or like a projector tabletop or if you're playing without a vtt system online so um you know like uh i don't know like if you're playing online most people use virtual tabletops like foundry fantasy grounds roll 20 to supplement the maps they make so if you have a TV tabletop, oh yeah, Dynamic Dungeons is very cool, Will. You should look into it. It has like weather effects and all sorts of stuff, but using it in tandem with Dungeon Alchemist would be awesome. I was looking into it the other day because I'm making a TV tabletop to demonstrate Dungeon Alchemist maps. And I, you know, as much as I love DA, it's limited in, you know, a few different points of view, like, uh, you know, weather effects fog of war things like that so we can make an amazing map in dungeon alchemist that's 3d export it to dynamic dungeons and use it for a tv tabletop oh interesting oh for sure game master the first person is awesome you know i've seen some dms what they'll do is they'll allow their players to use inspiration to go into first person mode to take a closer look around the room to investigate it or check for clues and stuff like that. Um, or to get a better idea of like how big the gap is they're trying to jump across or you know what I mean? Because it's very cool to look at the, the map in that perspective. And what they're saying, by the way, we have these tokens you can place. There's a bunch of free tokens in, included with Dungeon Alchemist. Um, they're, they're, they're Hero Forge tokens that we have worked out an agreement with them to give you a bunch of tokens for free and also the ability to link your Hero Forge account. So if you have a Hero Forge and you purchased, you know, packs of tokens or have a pro account and have gotten the packs every month. Oh, we hit 50. Thank you, Stacey. We'll do a giveaway momentarily, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned. Do not leave. You got to want to be present because we're going to give away a copy of Dungeon Alchemist here in just a few minutes. Um... So if you buy a token as a 3D digital miniature, not an STL for 3D printing, but a 3D digital miniature for export for use in DA and various other softwares, uh, it will allow you to import all of your tokens that you purchased or made into Dungeon Alchemist and use them. So like, hey, Pie Man, welcome back. So I made this token here. It's one of my favorite characters. It is a changeling artificer named Mac Giver. We're going to put him in and then you can actually click on the token. There's a bunch of tool tips below and one of them is an icon. And the icon or eyeball icon, icon as I call it, you can click on it and go into first person mode and look around in the scenery in this 3D environment. So you can, you know, go inside and open up buildings and kind of turn and disable things. Yep, the icon. That's what I've called it. I dubbed that a while back, so... That's a trade. That's a Holyoke trademark of Mac Industries. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. But I mean, the map, looking at it in this perspective, adds a lot to it. Hmm. Uh, Dubois, we'll talk after stream, okay? I see your messages. Sound good? I just don't want to be distracted, but I can help you out a little bit after. I could probably send you a couple. We'll work something out, my man.
Hmm. But anyway, going into this perspective gives you a lot of, like... <laughs> it's just a very interesting way to look at the map. Okay, let's set up that giveaway. I don't want anyone to be waiting too long. So we're going to be giving away a Dungeon Alchemist Steam Key. Um, we give away a digital key because uh, that way you can redeem it right away. Um, or you can give it to a friend or family member if you already own a copy. And uh, that way it's redeemable instantaneously and you don't need to wait for shipping or anything like that. The giveaway will run for 10 minutes. There'll be a reminder every two minutes. You must be following the stream to enter and you have to type a code into chat to enter. You only get to enter one time. I'm going to start it right now. So type exclamation or giveaway or exclamation giveaway to enter. How you doing, Sack? <clears throat> Zornish Hen, you, uh, you wound up using Dungeon Alchemist MP4s for my Zoom Forbidden Lands group last night. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad it was a hit. Glad to hear it. Okay, we're going to get out of the first person mode here. But this map here is actually a part of a demo I'm creating to show off how like maps can import into Foundry. So hopefully people will be able to uh, kind of see this in action soon. Okay, so cabbage theme went well. We actually had a winner and then I, I was showing the winner and then I accidentally closed out the map it was this one here Retsim one so I love this map how it had the cutaways of all the different floors and it was like a really nice fresh take on Dungeon Alchemist, and it was just an interesting, you know, way to do it. So I liked it and wanted to, uh, I thought this was a very unique take. You know, you have this big, huge building, and there is basically the ground floor, which is here, and then second, third, and then upper deck floor. Very cool. Very interesting map. I just like the pull apart. It's very cool. Okay, so I got to ask, how are you uh, GMs doing this week? I know a lot of you come here because you're looking for ideas and inspiration or you want to, you know, check out some of the new maps or or maybe learn some different ideas for yours. Uh, <laughs> uh, but basically, I, I love these streams because I love to help out our community any way I can. I know the majority of you are GMs that, you know, make maps for your campaigns. Some of you are new here, though. Um, and I would like to say, welcome, my name is Mac, I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Think of these streams, though, like an AMA format. So if you have any questions about Dungeon Alchemist, please let me know, and I will do my best to answer them. We also have a great community of cartographers here that love to answer questions, too. Um, those of you that are GMs that you're making maps for your sessions, tell me, what are you making for your maps, and what maps are you making, and what kind of plans are you doing for your sessions this week? Got a game in an hour when you see how my players traumatize all the NPCs I've just created. Thinking of using OBS to stream third person while using my webcam. That would be pretty smart, Zornishen. Building a night song, storm thing, king's thunder. I'm not sure what that means, but that sounds pretty cool, Von Yakos. Trim it to use it as a tile. Uh, where would you use it as a tile? Um... Ladybird. Currently down to five campaigns a week only. Only five campaigns? Jeez, Eric. <laughs> Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> That's a lot of campaigns, my man. Holy cow. I'm jealous, to be honest. I'm jealous. Silly pool I made just in case. Oh, I liked that pool, KO'd. 
It was very cool. It was an interesting design. I liked what you made. Uh, doing good. I'm currently down to... F <laughs> yeah, that is so funny to me. No game tonight, Highland? Hey, I'm glad you get a night off, though. You work really hard. Your map you posted earlier is really cool. Would you guys like to see Highland Lass's new map? It's very cool. You know what? You're going to see it anyway. Oh, KO, is your map up on the workshop, by the way? I wasn't sure if it was up yet. Ooh, okay, so. Okay, cool, we'll check it out next. Tomb of Nihilation is what your your players are in right now, Swedish Cook, that sounds very cool. That's I Honestly, Tomb of Annihilation is one I've always wanted to run as a player. I've never had the opportunity. So like, I've been wanting to find a table with my family and like little things keep happening that kind of get in the way. Like last year, both of our dogs died within a couple of months of each other. So we were just weren't in like in the right headspace to play. And then this year has just been busy with us like having crazy deadlines with the new updates and stuff. So I haven't been doing that, but I've been wanting to like find a table to play with for my family that could take three people in and it would be like a long-term campaign um, we play, you know, um, like we play together as well as we played a few one shots as a family, as well as we played, um, Solasta and Baldur's Gate and stuff together where we pass the controller around. So we kind of understand like the basics and everything of 5e, but it's more or less just finding a table that's willing to take in three people from the same house. You know what I mean? Which isn't always an easy thing to do because... You know, typically if one of us can't make it, it's like the rest of us can't or whatever, so. Okay, let's see here. Intro D&D for some younger kids in person with computer screen and projector. And they're being able to see both the top down and first person made a huge difference. How attentive. Oh, I agree, Lobotomy. So my son really, I think the reason he enjoyed immersing into Dun or like D&D &D and stuff like that more is because we were able to play it on video games and in like situations where it played like a video game more first. And then he was able to learn the rules and then go from there. And as a result of which, it, it, it you know, it's more interesting because it's more fast paced. And I think that's, you know, like a lot of media is moving into short form, fast paced entertainment. So I, I agree to a, you know, a degree having stuff like that helps, you know, that 3D and first person modes. It really helps those young kids visualize it and feel more fast paced to them for sure. Let's see here. I always love seeing cool maps. Let's see here. Next step for many of those kids will be creating their own characters with hero forwards and getting to see them on the map. That'll be very cool, Lobotomy. I have two Amphantastasic players, so first person helps a lot. Okay, so isn't that like where people are more like visual or auditorial? Correct me if I'm wrong there. I, I want to make sure. Aphantasia, isn't that what it's called or how it's pronounced? I, I, I apologize for my ignorance here. I just want to know for sure. You know what else can work too? Um, whoa, what just happened Highland? Is you can... Why? Oh, there, DA's back. That was weird. You could uh, use the abstracts, right? And put just like a plane, a large plane over the top and make it like stone, like up here. And just as long as you stretch it out and get it bigger before you bring it up, you could cover the top with something or even the circle one, which would probably fit even better. And then it would be a ceiling for it. Man, I'm falling behind on chat. What's C&C, Old Time Tavern? Please explain to me. <laughs> I mean, they're not required, Rebziot, but it would be awesome to play in DA maps. 
uh, as the, you know, I would be pretty, pretty impressed and tickled if I was in DA maps, you know. I have played in a few DA maps, and it's always been very impressive and fun as the community manager. Why is this happening? We're getting like a weird, like a flash. I might close DA and reload it. Okay, this um, giveaway is probably going to end soon. I just want to make sure we're on top of it. 23 seconds. So everyone stand by. Uh, we'll be announcing the new damn challenge shortly. I do have a theme, but if you guys want to pick another theme, I'd be open to it. Castles and Crusades. Oh, interesting. So it's just another D&D &D variant. And, and is it based on the 5e rule set? Okay, so Crazy 8's Commando, my man. Congratulations. Make sure you type exclamation claim or you do not claim the code. There we go. That was the quickest claim I've seen in a hot minute. Oh my goodness. Very quick. Holy cow. Congratulations, Crazy Eights. You want a copy of Dungeon Alchemist? What are you going to do now? Can we uh, give a, a big congratulations, a pat on the back to our winner? Because we're all amazingly good sports here. Thank you for paying attention, Crazy Eights. We're going to reload this map. <laughs> I'm going to build Disneyland. Oh my gosh, concrete. <laughs> You're going to give it to your friend? Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's seriously wholesome. It could just be Twitch. It might be just something with Twitch and their server sometimes. Like, okay, so because I'm not affiliated, I don't get priority transcoding. So if they're having problems on their site, any, any non-partnered, non-affiliated channels get dumped first. Oh, Rebsyot, that's awesome. Yeah, like giving your DM a copy of Dungeon Alchemist is like a big time win. Because really, I mean, it only helps you in the long run, right? <laughs> That's like giving your parents like lifetime gifts. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk about that. This is beautiful, by the way, Highland. Seriously, it's fantastic in the, the structure you've built here. And then you use the AI in the center a little bit too, it looks like. And then did some freestanding walls here. I love what you've done with the place. It just looks fantastic. And I love how you really lean into these uh, barricades, the palisades. Honestly, Highland makes some amazing maps. I don't even know where she finds the time. Does she even sleep? Or is Highland just like an assortment of kobolds stacked on top of each other under a jacket? I love the assortment of stairs in here. Oh my gosh, right? It's just like very well defended and it looks like a very defensible old, you know, town, like an old village where they had the outside area with a moat and then they could fall back into, you know, a more defendable. So this is based off of a real ca castle, Mott and Bailey Castle, right? Is that what you're saying? This one's a real one?
all, almost all of your maps are based off of real things, if I'm not mistaken. And that's what another thing I love about your builds is you put an effort of realism and history into them. It's very cool. There, I'm going to winterize this map really quick. If, if anyone, you know, would like to see that. That's... Oh, wow. Fantastic. Add some snow. It's just like a whole new level of fun and interesting. This is a beautiful map. And you're just using the lich gates to make roofing, right? These are just lich gates. Oh, right there, right? Hey, Reb. Hey, thank you for being here. Appreciate you as always. You're welcome anytime. If that's what I'm getting, you're taking off. Ah, it is a little bit annoying. I, I asked the devs about that, and they said it's something that they couldn't fix easily, so they just kind of left it. Um, I, I just suggested to them that anything below the water line doesn't generate snow as like a quick, you know, fix. But, you know, sometimes it's not easy to implement things as it is to say it. You know what I mean? Like, we can come up with a solution in our heads, but for them to actually implement it takes some time. The long goodbye is your suggestion? Interesting. That's an interesting theme. Consider it. Hey, Karak, thank you for the follow, by the way. I just noticed that a couple minutes ago you dropped a follow. Welcome, welcome. Okay. You did a great job on this map. Seriously, lovely. Let's uh, pull up a new map here. Let's take a look at a few more of the cabbage entries. Because there were some interesting cabbage maps that were uh, generated as a result of this. Let's take a look at this one. The cabbage ship it was one of the f first entries we got. And it's a very interesting take on a ship because they combined the new sled with a boat. And it makes it kind of look like a rocket ship or like a spell jammer. And I love that now because we can use abstracts to put things, you know, up on things and prop them and make them invisible by putting, a, you know, a single pixel PNG or an invisible PNG. This right here allows you to, you know, place airships in the air without having to, you know, have some visible object underneath. And it looks amazing. I love it. Very beautiful. And the great thing about this, too, is you can go in and start popping off the top and look inside at the various, you know, quarters and stuff. So it has a different element to it. It's beautiful, Yakos. Love it. Honestly, there were so many good cabbage entries. It was really hard to... Oh, and I love how you use the effects here to give off the cloud effect. So I'm assuming there's like an abstract under this that you raised it up on, right? Yeah, that's right there. Can't really see it, but it's there. Oh, it's fantastic. Old times, it is a very interesting uh, new tool to use for, you know, map making and immersion. Um, but it is a little bit overwhelming at first, but feel free to hop into our Discord. Can we get a Discord link dropped, please? Um, for anyone who's new here who isn't a member of our Discord, I highly recommend joining. It's a great place to learn things, ask questions, get to know our community. It is the biggest coagulation of members in our community. There's over 27,000 members in our Discord last I checked, or maybe even 28,000 now. Um, thank you, Remy. Much appreciated. Uh, but in our Discord, we have a you know general chat where you can hang out, get to know our community, 
We have, you know, da almost daily posts where the devs will leak, you know, images and share, you know, upcoming information from the next update. We also have our question and support forums, which are a great way to get support. Or if you have just generic questions about DA or its future, you can ask away. Um, we have our suggestion uh, channel where any of our suggestions on our upvote are automatically shared there. So you can keep up to what are the latest suggestions and vote on them. The Discord is a great place to hang out. Our GM chat channels are a great resource. GMs hang out, answer each other's questions, help them come up with, you know, uh, uh, new ideas for puzzles and um, uh, homebrew items and maps, etc. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? Welcome back. <laughs> how long did this take you to make, Yakos? Oh, by the way, uh, Retsim, I will ping you on Discord later and uh, send you a Hero Forge gift card for winning uh, Damn Challenge this week. Yeah, let's open another Cabbage Map. By the way, for those of you that aren't aware, when we do these damn challenges, so it's not, it's a great place to showcase your skills and compete, you know, with your fellow cartographers in a fun, you know, friendly, equal footing challenge. But when you, uh, <laughs> if you do end up winning the damn challenge, you get to, uh, you win a $10 Hero Forge gift card. So you can get, you know, a token or two or three for free, depending on their sales. In addition to that, um, I uh, tag you here on uh, on Twitch as a artist or a VIP tag, and then you get a little bit more popped out recognition in chat. It wasn't working last time I tried to do it, so I should uh, go back and fix everyone's that wasn't before. Uh, Mo Twenties D and D, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's go type cabbage again. Hey, uh, who's ready to see Seymour, by the way? Oh my gosh. Let's uh, take a look here. Let's take a look at the cabbage cult that Lucian made. <laughs> okay, you only just like it because uh, we're always like, oh, you didn't know this? And then you're like, wait, there's this easier way to do things? <laughs> That's the reason you hate me, too. <laughs> Look at this pool of blood. It's so brutal. Very interesting. Roll out the blood red carpet, right? So, very cool. Fun. Never mind the map where Seymour... I, hold on, let's discuss this cabbage cult in great detail. It looks like it was a mess in here. Things are happening. All hell the cabbage. Hold on one second, let me get the puppy. One moment. Okay, sorry. I honestly had to, uh, I forgot to send out that key to Crazy 8's commando, so I wanted to make sure I got that to him really quickly. I apologize for the delay to you, Crazy 8's, and for the stream having to wait there for a moment, but I like to make sure I get the key sent out. Crazy 8's, can you com uh, confirm in chat that you got the key as well so uh, they know that you got it? 
Dang, this thing is cool. I really like it. Okay, so... Okay, cool. Awesome. Anyway, sorry for the delay there. We hit a very useful feature in plain sight. KO'd, right? We're just awful. We're the worst. That'd be really cool, Lucian, actually. This map is very beautiful, though. Very well done. Great use of the abstracts. Great uh, use of adjusted lighting, effects, the pools of blood. Very, very fun map. Yeah, we got a lot going on today. Hey, by the way, we are 20 followers away from uh, hitting 1,300 followers on Twitch. If you could do me a rock solid, if you haven't hit the follow button already and you're enjoying the stream, please, please hit the follow button. That way you don't miss out on any future streams. We stream every Saturday, same damn time, same damn channel. That's uh, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UTC, 9 p.m. CET. Uh, these hands are actually the like anatomy hand. It's this one, but it, they just scrolled it up, made it even bigger, and then it's kind of in the dark, so it looks very messed up. It's this one, an anatomical hand. It's been in DA for a while, actually. They do look like it, huh? Because it's so dark. And you don't see the base of it because it's in the blood pool. Billy Butcherson's hand, right? Yeah, it is. You also used it in that uh, one where you were like, uh, it was the butcher, right, Sack? <laughs> in the grinder, right? So every Saturday we have like a big family breakfast, but it's like, you know, we have like potatoes and eggs and everything. And so I almost always get heartburn, I swear. And so I apologize. I'm just like, ugh, get a little bit of it. It's a very, this map is very good. Great use of all the effects and lighting. It's just a very fun map. It's It's got a mood, right? Yeah, the little, um, these are like, uh, you know, like essentially where you would put in like, um, what are those called a canopic jar or something or like you know like something like that but it's very cool what is this thing even called a, col a columbarium cool i didn't know that i learned something new every day Okay, we're moving on to another map. Oh, uh, what maps were we going to look up? I swear there was one I was going to look up earlier and I can't remember now. Let's go to recent, just to check. Whoa. Okay, hold on, I got to check this out. That looks cool. Wow. That's cool. The layers, right? And then they use the uh the black smoke effect to make it look deeper, which Swedish Cook kindly shared with the community, and that is a great tool to really give some depth. It just seems like it keeps going down and down and down. I wouldn't mind some ladders and stuff. Very cool. Love it. Love it. My phone keeps going off. Let me check what's going on.
<sighs> okay. I love how my social network stuff just blows up when I'm live. <laughs> you know, okay, so I was playing in a campaign and we were riding in like a star jammer ship that they that they were just using over like to ride over an area to use to get over this area we were going to check out and then go like investigate and um the whole team decided to jump from the ship like a skydive and then feather fall the last like five seconds or something and so they all dove from like 600 feet and then feather fall the last few seconds into the like into the battle zone and i stayed up on the ship and mad amanda like a huge crossbow it was so awesome <laughs> So I we the the captain of the ship was an NPC and kept looping the battlefield and I'd take shots down below just randomly and then the players were like using that distraction to get in and just murk all the bad guys it was awesome Hey see Lucian have a good one Good luck with your game Beautiful map though What map Zach Say it. Mercy Hospital, is that what it is? Ugh, you have so many maps, my friend. I, 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 please help me. <laughs> okay, Mercy Hospital. This one here, so it's been updated. Hold on, before we go. I'm going to reduce to low quality. Awesome. Good. That's awesome. Let's take a look at it. Okay, I'm assuming there's an entrance right here. This is the entrance. Okay, let's pop a token in. We're going in for the full tour. I'm ashamed a lot of your uh, your build bulletin board's empty here, Sack. What's going on? Losing your touch, my friend. I'm just kidding. This map's probably insanely detailed. Because the file size makes sense. Ah, I already found your name. Boom! Took me less than three minutes to find your signature. I'm getting good at this. Getting good at this. Boom! Sack plus sausage. Look at all those little eyeballs. That's not going to cause this to lag at all. Right? So, my computer handles it pretty good, but one thing I definitely want to upgrade in the next year is my graphics card. So, we got some lavatories. That one's a little messy. Ew. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, you know, they do not. Now, the paintings are customizable, so you can put whatever images you want in them in a lot of our paintings so you could put your players or whatever i hope in the future we get gif support um gif support would be great because then you could put like pictures with moving eyes and stuff like that in it i have 32 gigabytes of ram and the big thing that's holding me back my bottleneck and it's still very good is i am operating uh, with a 1080, a GT, uh, like, uh, you know, an old 1080, it's like six, seven years old now that I I've been using for years. Mac, there's something like transparency for some glass walls. Um, so, excuse me. 
using the abstract objects, you could create, you know, glass walls. Shared on our um, street, on our uh, community creations, uh, like our assets, our new asset channel in Discord, is someone shared a like a, a really cool, um, like, what are they called? The green, sorry, shoot. Gosh, I am uh, where you have the plants. Sorry, I'm like having a brain fart right now. Here, I'm going to find it really quick. A greenhouse. Let me find the uh, the link here. We'll share it directly. Yeah, so Lucian shared these. They're very cool greenhouse walls, and they're actually see-through because they used the PNG as a blank space to make it see-through. So that link there is very cool. Um, also, there was another wall shared recently by them that is like a garden trellis. Let me give you the link for that. This one's very beautiful. It looks like there's vines. So there's a plain trellis, a vine trellis, and a, a vines with like uh, flowers on it. Great addition to any garden. It's very beautiful. And that's a great use of abstract assets. Fantastic use of them. I really love it when our community kind of pushes the the limit of what can be done. Okay, let's uh, continue walking around. Actually, let's look around from the top for a minute so I get my bearings. So we got some more bathrooms. It's like there is a kitchen here. Oh, that is your cat scan room. I love this. <laughs> Very cool. That's a good question, Koyote. I'm not sure. Very cool. Very cool. Ooh, I love this. Is the patient screaming loudly? Yes. Continue with flow chart. No, probably dead. Oops. Brain. Can you see the brain? Yes. Definitely dead. Oops. No. Uh, if because no head present, see yes. Otherwise, continue with flow chart. Count. Count limbs. Do they match anatomy chart? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that's cool. So it's just like you're looking through to an x-ray. That's clever. Love it, Zach. You and Sausage knocked it out of the park again with this map. As always, my friend. K.O., they're your walls and you still haven't used them? I'm face palming so hard right now. <laughs> Who hurt you? Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> like they're harvesting their organs and then sending them through for the funeral. Have I found what already? I did find his signature first, like within the first three minutes, I found it. I was, I was a G. Oh my gosh, this little cannon. It shoots a huge cannonball. <laughs> Look at you advertising, cross advertising over here. Very smart. This one is definitely creepy. Baby Mari. Ooh, what's this? Very cool. I like this. Like the little counter there, too. Pharmacy, huh? Proper chemist. Kind of looked like it. 
You can get whatever you need here. Cures what el cures what ails you, right? Hell's what cures me. Oh my goodness. Oh you. Okay, last. Save the best for last. The operating theater. I was kind of avoiding it till last. Of course you got the creepy dolls. Like, what sack map would be complete without a creepy doll? I believe it, Remy. I believe it. You definitely sound like it. I wouldn't question it. That saw, though, that just rusty, like, log saw really sells it. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> it's really gross over here. <laughs> Dolls in half the rooms. Every five minutes, this map lags like crazy <laughs> because all the doll's eyes open simultaneously. <laughs> Just meat. Cool, Retsum. So, um, just a heads up to y'all. Uh, we got a lot of people in here, so I have a time for an announcement. Um, on the 5th, we're having a bonus stream. That lands on a Sunday. We normally stream every Saturday. Um, we're going to be streaming that Sunday because our lead developer, Carl Crombeck, has uh, volunteered to come out of his dev cave and uh, hang out with us on stream for a little bit and answer some questions. It'll be like a, like a dev AMA right here on the stream. So if you ever had any questions for Carl or uh, you want to know certain things about the future of Dungeon Alchemist, you have any questions about the AI, excuse me, um, he will be here on the 5th. That stream will actually be at a different time than normal. That'll be, uh, I, I actually have an event created in our Discord for it. One second. Awesome, thank you. I was gonna go get him. Oh, guess what, everyone? Guess who I've got? So I just dropped the link for the Discord event. Um, feel free to get Mr. Seymour Butts. Ooh. Okay. A little wet. Just had a bath. Every Saturday he gets a bath. <laughs> Why are you so shy? Oh my goodness. I'm... Really like snow. Right? your avocado there's the speaker no it's in there
That will take you to the Discord. It just goes to the Discord, um, like, website. And then you have to click yes, and then it goes into our Discord directly. I'm sorry, that's how Discord redirects. I promise you it's safe. It's a safe link. But the, the event, if you go to our Discord at the very top of our server, it says events 3. Click that. There's an event on the 5th. Make sure you RSVP to it. Oh, buddy. Okay. is a snuggler real oh my gosh hey no there you go see more break we all needed it, right? He really is adorable. He's such a good boy. And he is learning so quick. I kind of want to, like, I'm considering training him to be a show dog. Uh-oh. I think DA just crashed. Yep, it did. Uh, believe it or not, Sack's map crashed my, my, my DA. Who would have thought? <laughs> Sack and Sausage, this crash is brought to you by... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You guys' maps just push the limits. Well, you... Training him to use DA, maybe, in the future. Uh, so, he has actually learned a lot in the couple months we've had him, so... Oh my goodness, so we're we're learning Shake right now, and he, he learns everything we teach him, there is a symbol, like a signal, and a, like a command. So sit is sit with my hand like this, and he sits. Um, lay down is this, so we're working on lay down and shake. So he has different commands. Anyway, he learns really, really quick, though. He's been doing really good. It's pretty impressive. He's a smart boy, but he jumps and, like, really leaps over things and gets, like, way into it. So I think he'd be really good at, like, jumping over... Play Dead is next. Um, but honestly, he'd be really good at jumping over stuff. For sure. Like, doing those, you know, where they run around an arena and jump over the various, like, barricades and, like, different heights and stuff. Anyway, he is very smart, though. So we'll see. I want to try and train him and go from there. Agility Trials. See, I have no idea what it's called. I just know he'd be good at it because he's really agile. He's, like, all over the place. Okay, let's scroll in here and take a look. Looks cool. Let's take a look at this Dark Throne. Oh, that one's fun. Yeah, the finger guns gesture, that's cool. Ooh... Dark Throne, I like it. That's a vibe for sure. Seems like the second you walk in here, you're gonna trigger a lich or a necromancer or something. In <laughs> I'd live there, <laughs> right? There is a door at the back, it leads somewhere. Speaking of doors, have y'all seen the new like secret doors and that it were added oops there's like an assortment of secret doors and they are basically walls and so you can place them into the exact wall and they open up like a hatch so it doesn't show the little spines above in top down so it's a very secret door Um, I don't think any of the doors are freestanding yet. I will say, though, freestanding doors and windows and freestanding round walls of all types are definitely on the roadmap at some point. Um, I would love to see all the freestanding rounds in our next update because we got all the freestanding, you know, straight walls. That would be cool, but... You know what, ko You never know. You could have a secret door and it could lead to a secret pool. Or, you know, like a, like a, the hot tub area or like a sauna. 
It's only for like the elite. You could also put a speakeasy back there or something. Whatever. Anywhere there's a secret door, that's the kind of things I want to do with it. Or maybe like just like a reading lounge. <laughs> It secretly empties it? What do you mean, random ladybird? This is a pretty map, though. The lighting, the textures on the floor, and the stones in the back. It really is just, oh, beautiful. Okay. Onward! That could be cool, actually. Like, you trigger something and it opens and then it empties a pool. You could put it down below. Unfortunately, it's not freestanding, so it would have to be on the build level you use that. Let me let me show you guys how these these uh, new ones work, actually. I'm just going to make a just a generic, like, a uh, stew uh, forest. No lava flows, please. We'll just go no water. Create. So, let's just uh, hurry and generate, like, a crypt. And we'll do the burial chamber like this. So, if you go into the walls and doors, if you type secret, if there are any available, it'll show it. So, there's a couple secret doors here under the window type. And there's a couple under doors, if you type secret, okay? And it's not the same wall type there. This one is, though. Oh, uh-oh, uh that's a bug. It's definitely got the, the spine there, so that will not work. Let's just look at this one. Okay, so we'll put this one in here, and then we'll change it in a minute. We're going to just change the skin here in a minute to match. So you go into, say, walls, and then we just need to go to stone walls and find the one that matches this guy. So it goes all the way down. Looks like this, kind of. Yep. Okay. So this wall here, boom. You got a little secret door. Yeah, but if someone did a, an investigation check and their INT was high enough, they would find this. You know what I mean? You could also put something in front of it that's kind of obvious, like a bookshelf, bookcase, you know, something like this. So they would have to run an investigation check and then they found it. Or they, you know, like in, if, in my case, I would say, you know, something like, your investigation discovered a small air current flowing from behind the bookshelf. Something like that. The bronze bust of Shakespeare. Someone watched a lot of Adam West Batman. Sorry. Is there a Shakespeare bust? Uh, honestly, I don't know if there, like, there's some statues, but that could work, or I guess someone could probably make a custom one. They're probably the closest thing would be like Hendrix Gold Imp statue or something like that, but I doubt there's anything that's like a Shakespeare bust. <laughs> what is DA gonna do my taxes? That's what I like to say to you guys every time you guys get me some random things. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, I do. Oh, oh, my gosh. I just want to tell you guys and gals because like. Oh, the hooded statue looks cool. <sighs> We're getting. Let's just say that uh, let's just say that the floor is lava will come sooner than you than you think.
Not this moment, okay? Don't go go refreshing yourself every few minutes. Um. <laughs> February 29th. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. All I can say is, okay, there's some cool new things on the horizon for Dungeon Alchemist, including some changes to the Steam Workshop, which I know you guys all love Steam Workshop, but it definitely needs some, some, some tweaking. Needs some work. You know what I mean? Um... Excuse me. So, um, a, a few weeks ago, Vim kind of asked for opinions on a on a newspaper name. That's something that's going to be rolling out in tandem with Steam Workshop. So we'll have a basically a, a kind of a, a weekly newspaper where we feature maps, uh, the dam challenge, other news associated with Dungeon Alchemist right inside the workshop. Um. So it'll be kind of a neat new thing and allow, uh, let's take a look at this map. Simple, but beautiful. It's something that will be upgraded in AI. The discovering of the room, removing it can be a great thing. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there, Ricky. Can you rephrase, please? This week's birthday, Mac. Ugh. You know, I do want to do like an employee featurette. Oh, there's crabs and lobsters and sharks and stingrays. There's a little bit of everything in this map. So I um, personally would love to do a showcase where like maybe we do like a little, like a blog entry. It shows a picture of one of our artists and a description of them and maybe their favorite asset and favorite map. And we go through and feature... Oh, there's a turtle. I didn't even notice it. We feature every, you know, every artist, the devs, myself eventually. Look at that beauty. On a tropical island. Uh, I, you know what I love about when water clips at the edge here? It has this like aquarium effect where it's just like walled up. I love it. It looks so cool. It reminds me of those like tables that people make that are out of the resin where it's just like a kind of suspended water kind of thing. It's a very fun map. It has a lot of, you know, just like a lot of oomph in the little package. Stacy Rico made this map. Is there any maps that are your favorites this week? Anything jumping out to you guys and gals that just was like, oh my gosh, this was the map of the week for me. I spend a good amount of time looking through the, you know, the various maps. But sometimes it's, it's fun to hear your feedback and thoughts. Oh my gosh, this is KO'd's map. Let's check it out. Okay, so are we, uh, do we, uh, let's, let's talk about a theme for the, uh, for the damn challenge. I'll let you all pick. Let's talk about it for the next five minutes. If we can come to a consensus as a group on the next theme, then we'll, we'll pick it again. Because it worked out better than I thought. I'll admit defeat. It worked out better than I imagined it would, Sack. So feel free to contribute. <clears throat> you know, it's nice to do themes like that that have a good blanket amount of coverage too because a lot of people could use an academy. That's why I tend to suggest themes that are like farm, you know, in. So it's like... Yeah, steal my maps. Go for it. I share them for that reason. <laughs> Honestly, it's a good theme because it can help a lot of people in our community with, uh, you know, if we get six or seven, uh, you know, entries, 10 entries, that's 10 Academy maps on the, on 
Steam Workshop right away. I mean, there's probably already a good couple dozen, but it would be even more. Environmental disaster is a good theme. That's actually a really good one and something we haven't considered. Beauty parlor. So I will say, Retsim, that's not an easy theme to pull off because it requires damn editing. And while it is possible to do, I don't really encourage it or try to encourage it for our challenges because it's kind of above and beyond the average user's ability and I don't really want people to feel like alienated because they can't participate or they don't want to try and do that. Uh, so let's try to avoid themes that require damn editing for now. Maybe, um, you know, we could uh, do like a like a damn challenge, um, kind of like advanced, I don't know, like a contest where we take all the winners of the damn challenge for a year, for the year, and let them do a battle royale of maps so they can use any skills and any abstracts and anything to make the coolest map possible. Something like that. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. No, it is a really good one. Stacy made an amazing map, for sure. Sorry about that. I apologize. That read some. Gotcha. Yeah, see, I apologize. I miss I mistook what they were saying there. Environmental disaster is a neat theme, though. It could work really good. Haunted forest. There are a lot more dead trees, and with the effects we have now, Haunted Forest could be really cool to pull off. It was a lot harder to pull off before. Question, could we get embiggened? <laughs> when you guys say embiggened, it always makes me laugh, because I know that, like, uh, what's his bucket over on uh, Dirty Rollers says that on his stream all the time. And uh, it just makes me laugh. Um, okay, so we've got a few votes for Haunted Forest. And we got a few votes. For, there's like four or five votes for Academy and two for Haunted Forest. I think those are the two emerging themes right now. beginning i knew you were here dirty rollers just silently lurking waiting how you doing my friend haunted forest oh my gosh should we merge the themes you shouldn't cross streams but you can cross themes haunted forest academy <laughs> haunted academy we're starting to get more votes for Haunted Forest. It's starting to pull ahead. Okay. So it looks like Haunted Forest, though, was the underdog, has started to pull ahead. It is extremely useful as a general map, but also academies are. They're both useful. That's the, I like to pick themes that like cover a lot of bases. You know, let's not merge the themes because I don't want to overwhelm people. Let's pick one or the other. I think Haunted Forest has won, to be honest with you. It's starting to get more and more votes. There are a lot more kind of like rotted trees and whatnot now. And mixed with the effects like the fog and the green smoke and stuff, the necrotic fog, you could make a really cool, you know, that really decrepit Disney, like, old forest, haunted forest. It'd be cool. Okay. So we're going to make it haunted forest. By the way... Once we finish our uh, paperwork for affiliate, we'll be able to um, run polls like during the stream so we could get a live vote and people could vote and pick. So it would be a lot easier to do that. Okay, so the damn challenge theme 
Why is it not showing? Do y'all see it? Okay, there it is. Haunted Forest. It was frozen on my end. I mean, you could make some thorn walls right now with abstracts using the same method that Lucian did to make those, uh, you know, those neat little, um, like, planters and whatnot. Um, the garden trellises. You mean bigger abstracts, Wolfgold? Is that what you're asking for? I would love to have bigger assets, but what I think would be nice on the abstracts is to not limit their scaling because you could use them more versi versatility. Like they'd have more versatility if there was no scaling issues. I will bounce that off of the devs and see what they think. Okay, you know what? Where's my notebook? Right down. down. Oh. You want 3D one what? Hmm. 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 Sorry, I'm trying to find a new spot to write notes. English only, please. I'm sorry. Welcome, though. You could do 3D thorn walls if you used the wall and wrapped it, technically, kind of. Well, welcome, Breskedonia. Let's see here. Um, okay, so Wolfgold says... Sorry, I'm going to write this down. Um, and then we'll say uh, you were asking about... Limitless scaling. On abstracts. Abstracts and rocks. Okay. I will run that by them. And we'll see what they say. Honestly, like, if you, if you guys and gals have interesting suggestions or questions... I typically write them down, and then when I talk to the devs, I run it by them and ask them. I mean, I have a, a chat with uh, each of the devs, but yeah, our Upvotey is a great way to get your ideas out there as well. Please use Upvotey as a tool. I'll do my best to pass your ideas on, but just because I'm sharing it with the devs doesn't mean they'll use it. It's a, not a guarantee. You know, just because I'm I, I I have their ear doesn't mean they'll they'll use my ideas or. These, these thoughts I pass on to them. So definitely use our upvotey as there will be, you know, a hard resource tracking it with votes and comments, etc. It's a good idea always, Wolfgold. Okay, got that written down. Sorry about that distraction there for a minute. I just want to make sure I get that every time. I love the, the, the seal there in the middle, ko This is a beautiful map. Can I ask how long it took you? I watched you for a little bit on stream, but I didn't stay around the whole time because I was busy. I couldn't stay. I do try to pass on your guys' and gals' suggestions to the devs all the time. I just can't guarantee they'll listen, you know? And it, not everything's viable or easy. So, like, uh, someone asked me recently, hey, could we get the... Um, the image overlay so we could do like blueprints to make our maps off of as a reference. So you could have like a top down overlay. And I, you know, I asked Carl about it. And he's like, well, how would that work in 3D? And I was like, I didn't really have an answer. So I had to think about it. You know what I mean? And ultimately, I, I always try to have a use case and an explanation Oh, for sure. There's at least a couple hundred votes on the up on the overlay on on Upvotey, and so I that's what I you know I showed him the link and brought it to his attention, and he said, "So if you could come up with a good use case, and then how, you know, we could we could try, but it's not something that'll come out immediately, you know. So basically, it's one of those things that like if you guys and gals are interested in a feature, if you try to bring it to my attention, I'll do my best 
to you know share your your thoughts with the devs because you as the community you know you're sharing your feedback with me as a community manager makes sense to pass it on i'll do my best right you know what i think five ounce hide instead of the grid level because the grid gets buried under objects and you don't want that when you're making a using a blueprint you want it above all the objects so what i would suggest is essentially somewhere uh there is on this plane above this level is a kind of a, a blueprint layer that you could set opacity size and then you can insert an image into ideally a png but if not a jpeg and then you could set its opacity so it could work like a you know you could just take like one of those random generated maps online or one from a book or you could take a map you've drawn and put it in there you know what hey hey pixel uh, pixelated bunny how you doing welcome back thank you for the lurk i understand that von yakos and that's how i'm going to demonstrate it actually so i'm going to put together a little kind of proof of concept using abstracts as the way to make the blueprint above to show how it would work but it only needs to work in top down and then the second you move out of top down that blueprint would be gone because it would it would be weird if it was hovering kind of over all this stuff it would be awkward ricky a lot of people have asked for roofs and it's it's something the devs want to want to make work it's just not very easy because it's not a straightforward thing in 3d and when you can shape the building to any shape, it's not very straightforward either. I will say it's on the roadmap. The devs are very interested and it will be something that comes eventually. So I, I think it's just something that'll come later on in the development once the AI is more refined, we have more assets, etc. I do agree, layers would be great. Some things I've been pushing for personally is uh, the option to adjust the background to whatever you want. So we have this standard kind of like black and gray backdrop. Some people, you know, want white for print. That makes sense because it saves ink. Some people want black. Some people want chroma key green so they can edit it out easily and, and you know, in you know superimpose it somewhere some people want transparent so they can superimpose it even easier so i've been very much lobbying for that in the background trying to get some settings in export that you could just change the background to whatever color you want or from an assortment of filters transparent generic white black green etc so it would cover a lot of the bases yeah me too i would love it game master eric and i know there is a lot of people that would like it another thing i've been pushing for is a universal disable all animation button in settings um because there's been a few people come forward who complained about the animated trees and everything slowing down their computer they'd like to just disable them so while they're building it's not there there's also been complaints about it causing motion sickness so i i would love for the option to disable it for our community so you could disable it um, one thing, Sack, that I actually dreamt of. So I think of DA all the time. You guys want to hear an idea I dreamt of? A light brush. So imagine, you know how when you place a light object, um, there is all the filters for it, right? You know, you can turn it on or off, set all the colors, the brightness. So imagine we had under here a light brush. You could set all those same settings, set the brush size, and then just scan over all light objects in the vicinity and it automatically sets them to that setting. So you could set the brightness, the color filter, and you just scan the whole area of a dungeon or a map. Boom, automatically changes all of them. So instead of... And KO, you have a very powerful computer. So you asking for the ability to pause animations is important. Like, I want a token torch too. I've asked for that a couple of times. I know it's on the to-do list. I've asked for it a few times because it would be nice to add a light source to your tokens 
the the hero forge ones even if it's an invisible light source just a light button you could click and then set the light you know different things so it's like if you were holding a torch or if you had light cast on one of your objects you, the light would move with you makes sense But yeah, I uh, I dreamed of a, a light brush where you could just kind of like the object brush, just quickly apply settings to all the lighting in an area by brushing over it. And I told it to Carl, and he's like, that's actually a really good idea. We'll add it on the to-do list, so we'll hopefully get it. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see all the different haunted forests that get made, by the way, with the damn challenge. I hope you guys and gals have some interesting ideas. Uh oh, KO'd. It's not aligned. I'm sorry. I have to delete this map from the workshop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pretty close. Junk and heck. I just pointed it out because I knew you would say that to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I'm a bit I'm a bit of a a bit of a bully. <laughs> no, not a not in a bad way, but in a fun way. <laughs> uh it would be nice to have a brush for specific stuff. You know, it would be cool if we could program the brush ourselves. So like Maybe like under here, there was a brush that you could just click and then click the objects you wanted it. And then it would just do an assortment of those. I would assume with time, with quality of life improvements, things like that will come. <laughs> the beautiful map, KO. You did a great job. I love these little floaty things because, yeah, any any pool would have these things. And, and, oh, my gosh, are they obnoxious? Like, they just float constantly clickety-clack and get your fingers pinched in them or whatever if you touch them. Not fun. Not cool. It is a great pool. Seriously, great job. Let's uh, pull up another map. So we got about 20 minutes left in the stream. I just want to remind you all if you have any questions concerns things you want to ask while i'm here feel free to ask now um and i'll do my best to answer them uh and then we're gonna wrap up around 2 p.m uh 2 p.m pacific let's see here there's a lot of neat ones in here holy cow whoa ethereal table chess lady metallicana holy cow Whoa, aloe vera's up to it again. Look at this thing. Holy cow. Holy cow, look at this double decker. This thing is huge. Holy, this is like a man of war. Dang. My only thing is it should be on an, a transparent abstract to start. But oh my gosh, this thing is nuts. Very cool. Fire the cannons. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> What I would do, KO'd? Let me show you real quick. This is just like draw any room. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go through and just kind of get rid of the objects and the walls here just to demonstrate. 
So you draw, oh, it, oh, I didn't generate it without walls. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. So you go into the delete room tool and then in the center here, you can delete this section, right? Then once it's deleted, you go into the wall tool, delete the walls here. You can delete all the walls, or it doesn't matter, but it depends on the building you're building. Then in the terrain tool, you go in and uh, just set it to strength as much as possible, hit lower terrain and boom. Yep, cool. But this here is how you would add like a water source inside of a building. And the longer you leave this going, the more flat the wall gets. You can kind of see in down there, it's still flattening it out. It's doing its best. It just takes a moment near the edges where the surfaces are most steep. And then essentially you can take and, you know, put whatever water you want in here. Oh man, that lava is really... So if you turn the brush intensity up right here, your brush size, brush strength, it makes it a lot easier to make it flat. Just go around. Also, make sure you put the center of the brush where you're trying to set, like flatten things out because that's where the brush is most, the strength of it is. What's with the what? What, what happens? Oh, okay. Uh, so, essentially, uh, the water brush also digs. Does that make sense to a certain layer? So, that's how it creates water on layers where it's not deep enough already. So, it's just trying to raise it up to that point. Mac, turn that to water. Line up stairs to the floor level. We'll try it out. So first things first, you want to make sure everything is as flat as possible to the wall. Because it's going to be very hard to move an asset up to that if it's not perfectly flat. And it will. this is as flat as it can be for now, so we're going to do that. Next, we're going to grab a stair. So if you go into objects, structural, yep, go in here and take a look at them. Let's use this one because it's nice and... If you hold control, then you it won't snap per se, right? And then the key is just getting that height just right. Really hard. But if I hold control there, I can get it in nice and easy, like kind of at, near the edge. It's a little bit harder to do because, okay, so this is how Dungeon Alchemist works. It recognizes that edge is a very steep surface that's, like almost flat, but it still has a very steep edge. And it's trying to place that object somewhere on that edge. And as a result of which, it jumps up all the time, all over it. So you got to find that sweet spot. And you just got to realize that there's going to be a, a kind of near the edge that will work. Yes, exactly. There's no perfect edge right now because the way Dungeon Alchemist represent, like places objects and, and sees surfaces... However, I did see Vim comment just yesterday on a comment on Twitter or uh, on Discord about someone trying to place platforms and leveling them out where they would drop into the ground. And he said that's something they're working on where you could have the object sink into the ground independently. Well, one thing you want to do, KO'd, is just quickly change the water type without holding it. If you're just trying to swap it, just bop, just a quick click. Because notice, that, yeah, it did raise it pretty quick. Also, turn the brush size down, the intensity down. So it's like it won't raise very much when you click in there. Does that make sense? Oh, it'd be great for rocks. It'd be great for docks. It'd be great for catwalks. It'd be great for all sorts of things. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have both options. Flattening it again, whatever. Yeah, I would like to see the ability to just adjust the height of an object or side to side 
without you know like moving it independently like a scale and it's like tool tips that allows you to go up and down so i should be getting access to the next build next week and the thing is is there's a new feature they're giving me um that is that that new paper that we talked about the cartographer or whatever corner or whatever sorry i can't remember the name we landed on um and i will be learning how to customize that from a back end and as soon as I have access to that build, I will be able to do more teaser content daily. Because currently all the teaser content is Vim because he has access to the dev build and I don't. So, A, that's one thing you'll see more of. B, you'll see more teaser videos. Um, and uh, C, uh, I can update the upvoting knowing what's coming for sure. Because I have no idea until access I have access to the build. <laughs> It's like, uh, you know, I, I have no idea for sure. There's a few little things that they tease me on and let me know. But yeah, that's about it. Let me see if there's something I can share with y'all. Okay, I've got an image I will share with you. You guys want to see a teaser? Who's up for some teasers? Uh oh. Let's see, where is it? I saved it on my desktop. Oh no, it's corrupt. Geodes. So, uh, Wolf Gold, we paired with a PR firm recently who has been doing a lot of work to help us get more YouTube reviews, more streamers, etc. Which is something I've wanted to do since I became the community manager. So it's kind of silly to me. Like, I want to do this from, like, day one. But it is what it is. Um, they're helping us you know, spread the word, and they're working with a lot of content creators issuing keys on a few different sites. Um, I'm very happy about that because the word is getting out uh, about Dungeon Alchemist all over the place. We're getting a lot more reviews, a lot more social network boosts, a lot of, you know, people streaming it, etc. That paired with the new category is a big, big improvement all around. Um, so, yeah, I would say that boost you're seeing is definitely tied to that PR push. And it is it has helped a lot with sales, I would say, overall. Um, I don't get to see the sales numbers, but I do hear from time to time that we're doing good. I do know we're running an ad on, like, Facebook and on YouTube, and both of those have been very good for us. You know, I think DA's Kickstarter PR was big for a lot of reasons, but also it was prime right in the middle of the pandemic. And it was, like, kind of one of those things that everybody was itching for. You know what I mean? Map making was very popular. VTTs blew up during the pound pandemic. So like a lot of things like that changed stuff overall. And I think, uh, you know, that, that, that level of like recognition will be hard to obtain again. But at the same time, it's something we strive for um, where our community just first started to grow around the Kickstarter. Uh, that's a good question, Ark. I have no idea. I don't have access to the asset, so I, I haven't played with it yet. I've just seen a picture of it. I know as much as you. <laughs> Let me see if there's something else I can share with y'all. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, like, and I think it's just more a matter of time. Like, there's so many map making tools out there. And the thing is, is like, there's plenty of people who just draw their maps or just like set something up on a table. 
and call it a day. There's plenty of people who use different tools and different software. I think it's just a matter of Dungeon Alchemist getting in front of the right eyes. But we have a good, a, a huge community and plenty of support. It's not like we're lacking support, you know, but I definitely think, you know, we could always have room to grow. <laughs> Jeez, say Sue. I, I should ground you for that one. <laughs> Okay, let's find another map before Seisu makes me want to scratch my eyeballs out. Okay, let's look at uh, Aloe Vera's Cabbage Shack, because that one was cute, too. There's a lot of good cabbage maps. Cabbage maps, kids. Just like a simple, beautiful map. Love the use of the new, like, you know... Pumpkins and bean stalks. Aloe's Cabbage Shack. The Cabbage Shack. Cabbage Shack, baby. Hey, see you, Von Yakos. You have a good one. We'll catch you later, my friend. Zach, when I show stuff like that and you say things, or uh, uh, no, not you. I mean, sorry, say Sue, when you say stuff like that and I show things like that, it makes me not want to show things ever again. <laughs> okay, let me show you guys and gals one more thing. We'll blow your mind holes. All aboard the hype train, yo. No more hammers ever again, right? Like, I part of me never wanted to do that again. And so, like, like I haven't done another rail since then. And when I saw those, I was like, oh, thank goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, this wall was made by hand, placing every rock delicately. I know that with Highland for sure. My goodness. That tracks. <laughs> Every time someone says that tracks, I can't help but think of Future Man. There's a show on Hulu called Future Man. And in the last season, Seth Rogen was in it. And there was a scene where they were like just drawing all this scientific nonsense on a whiteboard. And they're like not really scientists. So they're like, so this is how we'll solve this problem. And one of them was like circles everything over and over again. That tracks like just kind of making fun of that trope. Oh, don't do it with hammers. That would you'd lose your sanity. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of bones in this uh, cabbage patch. Inside the, the plant, at the base of the plant. Two Seymours in one. <laughs> right? Yeah, now we have Audrey. <laughs> this is beautiful, though. Highland strikes again. Did you see the minecart is animated, uh, KO'd? It would be cool if when the tracks come out, you could snap this on it, and then it could follow the tracks kind of just on rails infinitely. It'll just kind of follow it on a loop. Hello, Divide. Elvin, how you doing? Welcome back. 
All right. Let's look at one more map. Oh, I love it too. So I also have some other good news before we wrap up the stream today. Um, I've been talking to the devs and they are going to allow me to expand the stream to be more times per week. So instead of once a week, we're going to be expanding hopefully to two, three times a week with the stream. It'll be very good. I'm very excited to do that. Well, let's take a look at this in the shadow of the behemoth's corpse. Whoa, those are nice scratch marks. It looks like some claw marks. Tore that apart. Godzilla. Whoa. <laughs> so, basically, how the stream's going to break down is we're going to have the damn streams every Saturday. And then I'm still picking the schedule and the days out, but there'll be one day a week we do map making. And that stream, I will just focus on a theme. We pick it as a stream and I build a map. And I think I'm going to just set up like a like an automated system where we can kind of pick some themes as a group with a poll. And then that'll be the theme and I make a map. So live building. And I'll do that for like an hour, hour and a half. And then we're also going to expand the stream to feature... Um, at first, it'll be a couple of one-shots to kind of test the waters and see how it works. Um, hey, Retsim, it's a beautiful map. I really love the way you use Dungeon Alchemist and add your own assets as well. I saw the one that you made like with the big, huge, like, it was like a tentacle or something on it. And then you also made one with the huge pit with the long, like, bridge. That was really cool. Um, anyway, I, I want to expand the stream to have... So there'll be dam streams where we showcase community maps and do tips and tricks and the dam challenge. And then there'll be once a week where we do map making and that's the focus of that stream. So I just focus on making maps. And then once every other week, we'll do a stream that features either a one shot or a long term campaign. That's kind of my goal is I would love to have a long term campaign that is a zero to 20 or a one to 20 campaign that is all dungeon alchemist maps so, so the 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 one shots will be kind of tests to see how it works and that'll give me time to also uh kind of figure out how everything will work figure out foundry from the dm side get every get all my ducks in a row and then also potentially find a long-term cast because there'll be a long process involved with finding people that are available to be regular on the stream like every week and also you know would be okay with participating in that kind of thing in addition to that um i will be inviting guest people onto the stream so you know a dev here and there one of the artists here and there and there'll be like a guest npc it'll be very fun yes yes remy we will try to get guest stars for sure that is the plan So the one shots, I would really like them to be more like three, four shots. And then for the long-term campaign, I'm going to break it into arcs, kind of like how an anime works. You know how when you watch like an anime or like a drama series on a TV, they break it into arcs that are like 10 to, you know, five to six episodes or 10 to 12 episodes. So that's how it will work. And I've already got this beautiful world that I've built and uh, devised like a whole bunch of homebrew content um including you know like an entire valley that is like m hundreds of miles across that has its own flora fauna creatures races background history etc um it'll be very fun i you know maybe we could break it down and do like a you know, I would definitely like to probably start with asking the players first and then go after that and maybe do like a you know, you know how Walking Dead had Talking Dead? A lot of those shows had the follow-up. Maybe we could do a follow-up uh, kind of like a... Sorry, like a podcast style where we talk about the episode, people's thoughts on it, the maps, etc. And I would really like to the community to be involved in this and that maybe 
let me kind of float this idea. Maybe I put out an idea for a map at, for like a like a theme, like a bounty, and cartographers submit their maps, and then we potentially use those maps in the campaign or in the one shots, etc. Uh, most likely Foundry. The thing is, is I've been authorized to start learning all the other software and to make tutorials and shorts and stuff for Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, all the other, you know, major VTT. So I'm going to try them out and see which one I like the most and go from there. But right now I do own Foundry. It's the one I've used the most. So I'll probably do that. We'll see. Foundry does have a lot of options, but it also like... I find once you dive into the rabbit hole, it gets really in-depth and complex, and it can be very much of a headache at the same time. I know Roll20 is great. I've played some one-shots on there. I know Fantasy Grounds is great. I've also seen, you know, Owlbear and a few others that are really neat, too. I'm open to checking them all out and going from there. I'm actually going to make, like, a, like I said, tutorials and, like, a checklist that's a comparison of, like, all the VTTs and what they do, like, what Dungeon Alchemist does with them, what various things work. Oh, does just still maps work? Does animated maps work? Do line of sight and walls and all that stuff export? Does it not? Et cetera. So it'll be, like, a compatibility checklist. That's something I'm working on right now. Anyway, um, we've hit the two a clock mark i would just want to say thank you so much for everyone watching it's actually almost 205 really appreciate you all being here being a part of the stream i've had a lot of fun hanging out with you all um i actually uh had a lot of fun with this stream and i appreciate you all being here um remember we'll be here next saturday and then also Sunday, not tomorrow Sunday, but next Saturday and Sunday. So the 4th and the 5th. So the 4th will be the damn stream. The 5th will be a bonus stream where we have Carl, kind of like an interview slash AMA. Um, so make sure you uh, go into the Discord, add those events, RSVP them, put them in your calendar so you don't miss out. Um, this stream, the VOD will be available within the next 24 to 48 hours. And like I said, we'll be here next Saturday. Um, thank you all for being here. Again, my name is Mac. I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. I really appreciate everyone that participated in chat today, all the lurkers, everyone that followed and hung out with us. Nikki, thank you again for the raid. And those of you that submitted your maps to the Cabbage Dam Challenge, as well as those that submitted your maps to, Dun or to our Steam Workshop that were featured today, y'all are the real MVPs. Seriously, these streams would be nothing without your contributions. I really appreciate you all. We'll see you next week. Again, my name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Have a good weekend. Mac out.